So you get out of the water, whether it's fresh water or salt water, and you wash all your gear up, but really how clean is the bladder on the inside of your BCD? Let's find out together. What's up guys, it's Ryan again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and in today's video we're going to be going over how you can clean out the internal part of your BCD. I'm going to be showing you several different ways to do that, whether it's through the inflator valve, whether it's through one of your OPV valves, and I'm going to show you a couple of tools that may assist you as well. But before we jump into that, if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right, to start the video out, I really need to show you two different types of BCD so that you have a better understanding of what the bladders look like. Now, I've got a backplate and wing here, and I've got a jacket style. With the backplate and wing, typically your bladder system, the material that's made is not actually the bladder itself. I know we call them wings, or we'll call them donut bladders, but the bladder is actually inside of it. And I want you to kind of think like a, an inner tube on a bicycle tire. So if I unzip it here, you'll see that it's a vinyl or a PVC or some type of plastic housing or a bladder. In short, it's a balloon is what it is. And if you think of it like that, you'll kind of understand how they can expand and contract. If we look at a different style of BCD, if we take this jacket style here, one of the unique features about it is it has a fusion style bladder. So what we consider the lifting part of the BC that surrounds around you would be the same as the backplate and wing, but there's no actual bladder on the inside. And I can show that to you if I take off the exhaust port here, You'll notice that inside, it's just the back side of the material, if you will. So I can kind of open it up and you can see down in there, there's no balloon. And the way these are manufactured is they'll take one panel, they'll put a sealant on it, they'll take the other panel, put a sealant, and once that hardens or it dries, it creates a waterproof barrier, and not just a waterproof barrier, but also an airtight barrier. And then when they sew the material together, they, they heat treat it. And you'll see this seam that goes all the way around, this heat treated seam. And those are called basically fusion bladders. Now, the problem with fusion bladders is, obviously, you can't repair them when they get damaged. If, if the bladder go, gets damaged here, I can't purchase an, another balloon top bladder to put inside. So that BC at that point is just going to be gone and over with, and you're going to have to get a new one. With a backplate and wing style, obviously, you can replace it. Well, let's talk about some of the things that actually damages it, and then I'm going to show you how to clean it out. When you're underwater... And let's say you've got too much buoyancy, you need to let a little bit of air out. When you dump air from your BCD, anytime you break that seal, not only is air coming out, but water is also going into the system. It's going to go through your inflator, it's going to go all the way up to the hose, it's going to go down in the bladder system. And then, of course, at the end of the dive, we're going to wash it out, which is what we're going to show you in this video, several different ways you can wash it out. And it's very, very important that we take good care of the internal part of the bladder and not just the outside part of the BC because salt crystal or as salt crystallizes inside and as it evaporates out, that salt is still in there. And if your BC bladder is stuck together, say if it's heated, it can actually fuse together and as it rubs, those salt crystals can actually cut your bladder. So with that being said, let me show you different ways to clean each of these BCs out. I'm gonna show you some specialized tools that a lot of divers actually tend to use on it. Uh, I'll show you a couple ways around that as well. And then I'm gonna show you some other uh, cleaning agents that you may wanna consider using in the future as well. So probably one of the simplest ways to clean out your BC is probably what your instructor taught you during the open water program. All you need is a water hose with a little bit of water coming through it, and you're going to take your exhaust port of your inflator. You're actually going to hold it open, and I'm going to get some water flowing here. You're going to hold it open, and you're going to simply just spray water down in it with that exhaust port open, just like that. Once you get enough water up in there, then what you're going to do is basically just shake your bladder around, all right? Get all those salt crystals running down to either one of the exhaust ports or what I personally like is I'll just hold it upside down, making sure that where the corrugated hose connects to the exhaust port here or the overpressurization valve, all that water and salt crystals are going to run down and then I can simply drain the water out. You can do this a couple of different times uh, just to make sure you get it good and cleaned out. If you do want to add a little bit of gear cleaner, whatever your flavor of the week is, I still like Pow Plow. I've been using this for the last few years. Really like this product. 
all you've got to do is put a little bit in there. Now, if you're afraid that you're going to splash yourself, maybe you don't want to get water in there. And I'll talk a little bit about why I like doing this method. But another good method is, is just open up your OPV valve and you can spray it right down in the bladder. So that's another good option as well. The cool thing about going through your OPV valve is you can add the detergent or whatever gear cleaner you're using directly to the bladder there. That way you're not getting it stuck in this corrugated hose. But let me explain why I like going through the corrugated hose. For one, not only is the water going through the system into the bladder, it's also going through the inflation port. And the inflation port's of course where you hook up your low pressure inflator. Now the reason I wanna do that is I wanna get all those salt crystals out and around or that's stuck inside that inflator system as well, cleaned out of there. Now, if you are a certified gear technician, then obviously you can break it down. Or if you've had some type of class such as, say, the SSI Equipment Techniques, you are probably trained on how to take this out, replace O-rings and stuff like that. Now, the cool thing about going here, you're washing it out, but if you take this little nipple thing out, you can actually take a little bit of silicone lube here, and this is just from Trident, and you can fill up the inflation port with this silicone. Once everything's clear, cleaned out, screw your inflation port back in, and then when you add air to the system, when you press the power inflator, it's going to shoot that silicone all through the inflator. And we've actually done a video in the past showing that, but it's going to shoot that silicone all through the system to make sure the spring mechanisms behind your inflator buttons actually work. And so that's one reason I really like going through, say, the um, exhaust port of the inflator valve. It cleans all that out, and you can take really good care of your inflation port as well. Let me show you another method as well if you want to give it a little bit of extra pressure. So XS Scuba, and there's a couple of different companies that make it, but XS Scuba makes this BC washout hose. And in short, it's a glorified, little short, stubby water hose, but it's got a low pressure inflator connection on it. And the way it is designed to work, if you look at a typical low pressure inflator, there's typically a Schrader valve in it. This one has no Schrader valve. That means there's nothing that's gonna stop the airflow but we're not actually dealing with air here. What we're dealing with is water. So I'm gonna screw the water hose in onto the end of a water hose. And then I'm gonna take the low pressure inflator side, put it onto the inflation port just like that. And I'm gonna open the flow of water and it's actually going to start filling up the bladder of my BCD. So now there's water going inside this bladder system. Once I've got it full in there, Okay, sometimes you may have to push the button, but once I've got the water flowing up in there and get a sufficient amount, all I've got to do is cut the water off. Okay, I can disconnect here. Once again, shake that bladder around, get it nice and cleaned out. And then all I've got to do is allow that water to come out. And this really allows you not only to clean the bladder out, it's also going to clean out the inflation port of your inflator system. Okay. So I got all that out, and then no matter what type of BCD that you use, you always want to store them with a little bit of air in it. So whether you use your low pressure inflator with a little bit of silicone grease, or you simply do an oral inflation to it, that's going to prevent that bladder from sticking together. When it's really hot out, right now it's about 85 degrees out here, so when it's really hot, that bladder can actually stick together. And if you didn't happen to get it cleaned out and all those salt crystals in there, it's just going to rub it together and break down the elasticity of it, and of course you're going to ruin your bladder. But guys, these are some simple tricks that you can use to prolong the life of your BCDs. I've been using them for years. One of the things that I do add, of course, is a gear wash to the inside part of the bladder. Once I've got the inflator system and the hose washed out, I will take off one of the exhaust ports and simply pour it in. Now I do want to close with this real quick. I know a lot of people may say, well, you got to get all the water out. I still hear the sloshing in. And yeah, you primarily want to get most of the water out. If you still got a little bit, guys, it will evaporate out. You will be fine. But if you're diving in salt water, get it all out, get the salt out, and you should be good to go. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me and definitely share it. If you got any questions or you want to see more gear-related videos, let me know down in the comment section what you want to see. And if you are interested, check out the SSI Equipment Techniques course because we go more in-depth on how you can take care of your gear and not just your BC, but your cylinder even your regulators, and it does go more in depth than what you actually learn in your open water course. Because I really appreciate you watching this video. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, 
We appreciate your business.